Welcome to The Opening, the place where hope is happening, with your hosts Fran Cadrone and Marina Teran Maneri. For more information about Fran and Marina, or to apply to be a guest on the show, please go to our website, www.hopening.com. The Opening is for informal purposes only and is based on the research of your hosts, Fran and Marina. They, as well as their guests, are not responsible for any losses, damages, or liabilities that may arise from this podcast, which is not intended to replace any professional medical advice or care by medical professionals you are currently utilizing. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at episode 109 of The Opening the place where hope is happening. And I'm here with my beautiful co-host, Fran, who's up in Northern Alberta, I'm in Calgary, and Fran was just returning from a wonderful trip to Ireland, and we'll hear about a little bit about that today. But Fran came up with this amazing topic to talk about today, and that is FOMO, the fear of missing out. So mm -hmm. Fran, how was your trip? My trip was fantastic. I did very little. Oh, I love it. That's the way a holiday should be. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way a holiday should be, Marina. It should be. But historically for me, I've wanted to put as much things in there as I could, right? Because here in Canada, it costs a lot of money to fly anywhere, right? right? And then when you get over there, well, you want to get as much stuff done as possible because there's a very good chance that you won't be back. So, yeah. Typically, what I do is I just pack the itinerary as full as possible because Marina FOMO exists <laughs> with me. Yep, fear of missing out for sure. I, I'm very out. familiar with that. <laughs> yes. And, you know, as I question myself, which you and I both do because we always want to be better human beings. I question about why do I have this FOMO that I fear of missing out? Why is it so prevalent in me? And uh, this trip helped me to understand that I'm not missing anything when I choose to limit myself and the things that I do. It's actually more enjoyable and mm -hmm. more thoughtful, more it's better for me. It's better for yes. me. So tell me about the way you travel. When you travel either with Wayne or with friends or whatever, do you try to pack in as much as you can on, on your holidays? I'm grateful for Wayne because we are polar opposites. Wayne would be happy to just be at a place and I want to do stuff. So we are that happy medium of doing some stuff and doing nothing. <laughs> so. And so it's it's just a perfect combination. When when left to my own devices, I probably would constantly look for things to do. But then looking for things to do, maybe going for a hike and not trying to see the next thing. I just don't want to, when I travel, I don't want to be trapped in a hotel room reading or watching a movie. I can do that anywhere in the world. But when I am at a place where I travel to, I like to walk around and drink in the nature and sit in a park and breathe in that air and hear the language and maybe eat some local cuisine. That's what I want to do. But yeah, Wayne would be very happy just sitting by a swimming pool and reading a book, taking a nap. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Which would drive me insane. Yeah. Yeah. So what I typically do when I travel is uh, get on some kind of a tour bus at, you know, 6.30 a.m. with a bag lunch that you get from your hotel and drive to the 13 spots of the tour bus, right, with a billion other tourists are all get off all of their tour bus at the same time. And we all enjoy uh, glimpses of what we're supposed to be drinking in, right? Whether yeah, it's yeah. 
cathedrals or whatever it is that we're supposed to be really immersing ourselves in the culture. Basically, it's on and off the tour bus. And by Mm -hmm. the time you get back to your hotel room, you're exhausted and you do the same thing the next day or you want, you know, you're in a different hotel room the next day. So I was telling my family last night that when I do this, a lot of times I wake up in the middle of the night and I don't know where I am. I don't know what's, what city I am in. Am I at home? But how come it feels different? And then I realize, oh, yeah, I'm in such and such a city. So this trip was different, thankfully. I have a question for you because this kind of lead into a different, a little bit of a, of a detour on the subject. Don't you think when you jam pack things like that, it's especially when you see five cathedrals every day on a trip like that, especially to older older um, countries, you start to get information overload. Your mm-hmm. brain just cannot take it in anymore. Mm-hmm. When you have too many cathedrals, too many castles, sorry, people who yeah, live where there's Batu, lots of castles. Batu in India, it was all the temples. Yes. Temples and castles, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not that you don't appreciate it if you do, but it's like, oh, it's another one. And um, so limiting is important. And this trip that I took to Northern Ireland, it really was limiting. So I was there, I was gone from home 10 days, and we only left the place where we were staying three times. So we went on a hike one day, we went to Belfast one day. And we went to Down Patrick, which was where St. Patrick came up, came up ashore and built his church and developed a community. And the rest of the time was on site. And we didn't, we didn't have to pack up at all other than when we left after our retreat was over. So that was an eye opener for me. I enjoyed it in so many ways. And when... Uh, people ask me how my trip was it totally exceeded expectations because I've never done such a laid-back trip before but it was amazing and I know Marina that I'm going to remember this trip because it wasn't jam-packed it wasn't cluttered so which brings me to fear of missing out so we all, I don't know, maybe not all, but many of the people that I know try to do that with their lives, to try to fit as much in as possible, as though this is, if I don't do it, I'll never get an opportunity, another get another opportunity to do it. So you take it on, and then you leave it on your plate, and then something else is bl- sh- uh, shiny and glittery, and you put that on your plate, and you put this in your, and pretty soon your plate is overflowing, and you get, res- I get resentful, I get bitter that, na, 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 and then I, 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 I give myself a hard time as well, because I've yeah. taken on too much, and I should have known better, I should have known better, and why didn't I know better, and then it's that, yeah that thing that we tend to do so when I look in my kitchen I I have got a beautiful kitchen as you do do now I've got all these drawers tons of drawers which I have full of stuff how much of that stuff do I use limited right now but I might need it someday (laughs) oh and I think that is part of the issue is we, it's almost like we prepare for something that that we don't need, and uh, yeah, I um, the to me it comes back in a in a way. I'm actually looking up something here because I just bought a book while we were on Italy, and it's about information overload. I just found it. It's by Johan Hari. Now you, mm-hmm. I know you know Johan Hari very yeah. well. Stone focus, why you can't pay attention and how to think deeply again. And the, um, I'm not very deep into I'm about halfway into the book, but it's very interesting because he spent some time with his nephew and he realized how this kid 
does not, he took his nephew to, um, where was Elvis from? Mem Memphis. Mem and, uh, yeah. and he, um, and he had the hardest time. He said, I'll take you to Memphis with me, but you are not going to be on your phone the whole time. And when he, um, whenever he catches himself, this kid was on the phone and he was having withdrawal. And, um, and then he goes into how he then, Johan Har himself, he secluded himself from society for a period of time without internet, with a phone that, that could not even go on internet and with an old computer that could only be like a word processor to, to type on, no internet. So it's, it's, it's really made me think a lot today and we keep on adding more and more and more on our plates. We keep diluting our attention more and more and more. And even when you go on a holiday, trying to jam back so many things in there that you wake up in the middle of the night, not knowing where you are because your mind has had enough. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you talk about Johan Hari's book. I read a book too, and it's called Essentialism by Greg McEwen. Uh, essentialism, bring forth more by doing less. Yeah. And he talks about the value of disciplined elimination, disciplined elimination. And the, he quotes Michelangelo, I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set it free. Right. Beautiful. And so that's what our lives should be like. It's carving away, taking away until yeah. just the essential, the oh, most so important true. is left. And I look at all these emails in my inbox and how much stuff I subscribe to. And um, he talks about taking one thing away a day, just one, eliminating one thing a day until, until you be feel better. But part of it is maintaining an empty inbox, right? Just dealing oh, yeah. with stuff as it comes, mm -hmm. editing as it comes along so that you don't end up with 11,000 emails in your inbox. I need to show you this <laughs> because at some point I was really good at every single day when I go to bed at night, my inbox is at zero. I don't know if you can see that. What do we got? We've got 1,000. 800 70. 1, yeah 79 so you and, and it's, I. but you know it's it's we we get bombarded and um our information gets sold all the time I know. and i can give you a great example of that i i have very good spam filters on my on everything but about a week ago i saw an advertisement for a dress an infinity dress and it's it's different than any other infinity dress it's not a bridesmaid there. It's the dress that I can wear. And I decided, okay, I'm going to buy this thing. And I went in and I typed that they, they, when you when you go in, immediately they ask for your email address. And I put my email address and then they said, okay, because I gave the email address, I now get 5% of my first purchase. And so I go in and I want to order this dress and I get interrupted. And I didn't get back to it for a few hours. And by the time I looked at my email, I have about three different dress stores now suddenly emailing me. And so that's the kind of things that happen that drives me absolutely crazy. Besides, like you, I have a personal email address and I have two business email addresses: one for Festive Voices and one for MTM Therapy. And... And with, you know this as well, the moment you start your business, the vultures come out of the woodwork and you get all these emails. Oh, I can help you get a million clients. And I get that every day. I just let them spam, 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 spam. And so it's it's actually sometimes comical, the things that come out with. But mm -hmm. yeah, so if I don't quickly go in and clean that out, then this is what happens. So that's not just one email address, that's three. That's right. So it's difficult not to sometimes engage too as well. It's like something comes across your inbox and it's something that is magnetizing at that moment. And you do click, click, double click, open it up. And yeah, it, it might be engaging at the time. And, but 
you know, uh, whether you uh, accept the cookies or not, <laughs> you yeah, know, I, allow... I became click bait. So now I block them all. I will not buy yes. that infinity dress because they immediately shared my information. So, so forget it. I don't need so that dress. Yep. Yeah. And it, uh, in the book, it talks about doing more, doing more by removing more. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have 1,079 emails and then, because I think our subconscious mind knows that we've got thousands of emails in there. And so yeah. whenever we turn our computer on, my subconscious mind is going, remember those emails, Fran? Remember yeah. them? Maybe you should, maybe you should find out what's there. And then I get in the rabbit hole, which is mm -hmm. like an hour later, still trying to figure out what's important and what's not important. Right. And then distractions. Distracted. So many distractions. Yeah, distracted. And it's not, you know, it's not just me or you. It's our culture. I think mm -hmm. it's a, it's a North American culture of distraction. So whether we choose to go to a store that allows us a huge variety of things to look at or whether we narrow our focus and go to the store that has a limited amount of yeah. things but it's just what we need right. so that's one way I've subtracted is I go to buy groceries at a very small store oh yeah we we started to do that too yes very a very small one yeah. limited amount of aisles short aisles easy to grab right. get out of there right. fast not yeah. a lot no, we, of we eye candy yes. right yeah. one way of uh, just one more shiny thing to run after and one more shiny thing about that because you were a teacher for so many years decades and so don't you think by being so distracted and always throwing a new distraction at kids, we um, are actually creating ADHD, the we, inability I, to focus on one thing? Absolutely. We, I believe that. Others might not believe that, and that's fine. But as a teacher, I can see how back in the day, and some say it because it wasn't diagnosed they lived with undiagnosed ADHD. Okay, great. But as a teacher, I could see the difference in the first class that I taught at the beginning of my career as compared to the last class I taught. Yeah. And there was a huge amount of distracted kids, kids that could not focus. They could not focus unless they had a screen in front of them. And then they were right. great at right. focusing, which what does that tell you? What does it say about what has mm -hmm. happened? If there's yeah. an ordinary human there, uh, it's not, it's too boring to be an ordinary right. human. So instead I'll get engaged with a screen, which yeah. is, I think it's going to be detrimental right. in the long run. One thing Alberta has decided, I don't know if you've seen the news, uh, that uh, coming up this next school year, no cell phones are allowed phone in the free school. zone. I know. I love it. Yeah. Wonderful. I like, love teachers it. Have been such saying a that. Direction. Teachers have been yes. saying that for yes. 15 years, yeah. no cell phones. Yeah. And yet it got infiltrated. There was somebody that said, no children need to learn how to responsible use of cell phone. And so that got put on the backs of a teacher who's still trying to be a teacher and yes. teach kids how to be responsible users right. of cell phones. Right. And we failed. Us teachers, yeah. we totally right. failed. Uh, we take credit for that because it was impossible. No, and... it's, it is not. And you know, Fran, you and I grew up going to school without a cell phone and we were all okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't call my mom or I couldn't chat with my best friend. We, we still had the little notes that they would write and, and pass along to each other. That's right. <laughs> We passed notes, yes. very harmless. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so essentialism. And so cut out the options, cut out the options. If you want to save some time, go to a small grocery store, 
cut out all the extra activities. And I do have to say to my right. daughters, I apologize because I put you in every possible event after school that was humanly available in my little town. <laughs> I truly do apologize <laughs> because I wanted to give them the spectrum of right. activities that they could you know, yes. become a virtuoso in. So whether it was piano lessons or guitar lessons or swimming or soccer or taekwondo or, you know, whatever, I did it. Well, Frank, we, we did the best with what we knew. And my kids were run ragged and I was. The best thing ever was when one of them got their driver's license and then they could, you know, Mallory got her driver's license and then I didn't have to drive them to their activities. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I, I went for the same. Yeah. Was mm -hmm. it good for me? No. Was it good for them? Not at all. They couldn't wait to get a summer job so they didn't have to do all these activities I was giving them. <laughs> well, so I want to talk to you about anything. another kind of FOMO. Um, so I am the person who fall into this trap time and time again. And I hope that breaking my elbow and the accident and everything that happened was the last straw in that. But I get evolved, involved in my family's emotional dramas. And I would, first thing in the morning, is turn my phone off to see if there's an update. And if there's not, I would start to contact them and ask them what's going on today. So I overcame that. But recently, I fell back into the trap. Now, my dad did end up in ICU with um, last stages of kidney failure. He did refuse at first to go for dialysis until he didn't. Now, he's getting dialysis and he's doing really right. well. He's been, he's been released from hospital. He's in a um, rehab place where they are helping him Good. again. But during that time, I got too involved in the nitty gritty politics of the family. And then it, and that happened during our trip to Italy. And every single day, it was like this shadow that followed me wherever I went. And uh, until I ended up, I woke up in hospital and suddenly all these messages comes in about the family drama. And I'm like, care? I just want to be healthy. Yeah. I don't care. So I, I stopped that. I stopped that. And the freedom is beautiful. Yeah. So fear and that of missing is, out in that sense fear, as well. Absolutely. Why is it that we feel that us knowing everything about what's going on with the family is the best thing that could be? Right. Whether it's our children whether it's our grandchildren, whether it's uh, siblings and extended family. Uh, I'm not sure why, but yes, it is. Okay. And it could be because we're women and we do care. We care about people. Okay. We care about our family and we get involved. But is it truly essential? No, it's not. It's not. And no. that comes to another point. Things that we fear to miss out on aren't it sometimes things that we would easily get addicted to yeah yeah you're right um for me it's the sweet stuff right it's the sweet it's the oh that big beautiful birthday cake that's somebody's party and you have to have a piece of birthday yeah. cake because it's yeah. a birthday and then it's like, how big of a piece? I'll just take a sliver. But then it's, I just didn't get enough of a taste of it. And might as well throw some ice cream on it. And just because it's a mm -hmm. birthday. And then tomorrow you want the leftovers. Right? Well, God, God help me if I've got extra birthday cake left in the fridge. Right. That's, a, that's a bad thing. Like um, sugar, I think is one of the worst things. The fear of missing out. And uh you know, almost then creating events to justify having that sugar. We don't need sugar. No, but you know, we're that also sugar. brings me to thinking about peer, the peer group when we're teenagers, right? We don't want to oh, yeah. not have 
people. We don't want right. to not be alone sitting, eating our lunch alone or being wherever we are by ourselves when we're a teenager. So we get involved in things just so that we have a, a group right. so that we can belong. And yeah. then that group might exactly. pull us into exactly. things that are not healthy, that are right. not good for us, that are not beneficial. And then it's, what do we do? Do we leave the peer group? Well, that'll mean leaving our friends and then I'll be alone again. Or do we just go along with it and perhaps become addicted, perhaps become all of these other emotions that might be brought up later, some kind of shame or all of the things that happen, right? Hashtag now me that too. Makes me think. Pardon me? Sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. <laughs> you know, hashtag me too. When there's uh, a beautiful, look, good looking boy, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Because I'm wearing a headset. So if, if there's a really good looking boy and we are, we had a lack of something in our lives, and then he's attracted to us, we're attracted to them, we might go places, do things that we never intended to do, but fear of missing out. What if I don't do this, I won't be fill in the blank. If I don't do this, I won't be loved, I won't be accepted, mm -hmm. I won't, mm -hmm. you know, all of those, the fear of missing out, it can get really, right. really deep. Right. And then, you know, you and I end up, helping people heal from all of this stuff this fear of missing out so let's go to those root causes mm -hmm. remember what we learned in our studies about not being good enough being different and not belonging mm -hmm. yeah. root causes of why we would allow ourselves to be swayed and so i think Getting to know who you really are and what your true value system is, is so valuable. So that it doesn't matter if all your friends want to get a nose piercing, whatever. It doesn't matter because you know who you are. You don't need to follow. You can just be happy with who you are. And that starts with childhood, right? childhood so if you know um you've got a grandchild i don't yet i i mean that um, you know i'm no longer able to influence my daughters significantly because they're already in their late 20s and early 30s and so but if i had the chance to rewind the wheel I would do so many more things differently because I know different now. So now that we know different, we do different and we know the value of those formative years, zero to seven, zero years to seven years old. If you can teach a child that they're worthy, worthy yeah. and loved, that they belong no matter what, and that they are cherished and that they have value just by being who they are. Yeah. yeah. One of say. the one of the biggest joys for us is having our grandbaby. He's not a baby anymore, but we make a point of when he comes over every Monday to play with him for hours. It's very nice that it's warm outside now, but we play that kid into hunger. He actually asks for food mm -hmm. and we play him into exhaustion and it's, he plays us into exhaustion as well. And to have that influence on him to just love to play hide and seek with a ball, airplanes, buses, we have a big school bus for him. It's, it's just such a beautiful phase that they are in. And to refuse to just prop him in front of some electronic device, we don't do that. And I think what you're doing is you're prioritizing. You're mm -hmm. making him a priority. So it doesn't matter what somebody else is asking you to do on that Wednesday afternoon. Right. He, Your grandson is priority. And so you will turn away probably even a session, a client, whatever. And it's blocked out. Because yeah, I block my calendar. It's yeah. done. And you know what, Fran, the, the few times that he was here when I would get busy and I said, okay, watch something on TV. 
he gets so mesmerized by it that he becomes mm -hmm. almost not reachable to me. And he's so young, two and a half now. And, you know, now that we decided, okay, no, um, we're going to plan it better that he's at a different age as well. Um, if I have to do something, Wayne will play ball with him or whatever. And so it's not just me in it. Luckily, Wayne is here as well. So um, just prioritize for us differently. Like, no, no, playing with him is still the most important thing. Not watching TV, not watching something mm -hmm. on some device. And he loves it. He loves mm -hmm. it. He mm -hmm. squeals with laughter. It is so sweet. Mm -hmm. So it's it's good to see that influence that we have. I Like you, I cannot influence my kids anymore. I wish I could, but I can't. But I have this raw material in my hand. And I can make the sacrifice to be present. Yeah. And what I think advice it comes back to it, right? Yeah. What advice can you give to families that may be watching right now who don't have a grandparent available to that help out in that one. way? That is a tough one. And you know, um, Fran, when I moved to Canada, my oldest, um, it was just before his sixth birthday, and my youngest was three years old. And uh we didn't have family yeah and i couldn't i mean my ex-husband had some family but they were not in our neighborhood i couldn't call them and say can you babysit can you help john or tim my sick today i couldn't do that but then even worse two years later john is now eight and tim is five i get divorced right. and now i'm a single mom and somehow we just made it work <laughs> I am um, I I made a very good friend and we are still very good friends today who lived in my neighborhood and she became my family. When the kids were sick she would help. When when the there was one point in our lives where Tim and her son were really good friends and because I worked full time Tim had to be in the lunch program and she said, no, she prefers if Tim walks home with her with her son to keep him company. And then the two of them can have a home cooked meal every afternoon. They've done that for years. Mm -hmm. Years. It was just amazing to see them mm -hmm. grow together and to have that. So it's a tough one, Fran. I cannot say that I have really advice, but I can say that somehow I went through that. And um there's sometimes luxury in poverty in the sense <laughs> that um, when my kids got to that point where I wanted to have Game Boys and, and all these things, I couldn't afford it. It was not even on my radar. I, I, gosh, no. But then they bugged me and they bugged me and they bugged me. And then I found out that there is a flyer route in our neighborhood. And I applied for it on their behalf. I had the lady interviewed them both and the two of them shared it. And each of them, I mean, I'm talking 2007, eight and nine, each of them made $90 a month. And they were to open bank accounts for them and they could just put that away. I mean, they never really used all of that. So when the next big event came in life and they said, mom, I want a Game Boy. I said, well, now you have your own money. You can buy that Game Boy. Mm -hmm. I love what you said. There's luxury in poverty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you my know, my point with that is both my kids started to learn to, if they want some things in life, work for it. Mm hmm. I couldn't yeah. just give it to them. They and yeah. both of them are highly successful today. Yeah. Both of them, wherever they start to work, they excel. They do fantastic. Everybody loves them in the workplace. Mm -hmm. They have work ethics. Mm -hmm. They work hard. And yeah. I'm pretty sure it's because I couldn't just give them things. That's right. And um, it's a gift, right? It's a, uh, it's hard. You know, there's at the time it might have felt hard to be to not have the money to buy and provide, but you know, it in the long term it was so beneficial. And my my 
existence was the same with being a single parent with my two daughters. And uh, I was super blessed. I had a big family around here. And so they hung out with cousins. They hung Mm -hmm. out with cousins and the cousins were on the farm and doing farm stuff and doing super interesting things that mom didn't do. (laughs) I, I didn't do super interesting things like their older cousin you know, so I mean, whether it was for Morgan, she learned how to be a firefighter in high school because her older cousins were firefighters. And she she became a, she she did that. She's now doing that for her career. And so right. those kinds of things. Uh, so there is luxury and poverty. We don't have to have everything and we don't have to fear missing out. Because the missing out part was never important in the first place. And you so. know, Fran, I, I used to work with seniors and I learned something through that. And it's interesting as I am very much in one of those phases right now too. I saw that for a long time in your life, you accumulate stuff. Mm-hmm. And let's put the fear of missing out in there again. Mm -hmm. you accumulate more and more and more sometimes you don't even use half that stuff and then at one good day you start to get rid of it Mm -hmm. and then and that's where I am now I mean we had a renovation I I went to the bank uh two days ago with a wallet full of cash because I have sold so many things on Facebook marketplace (laughs) But we didn't mm. need, I had boxes full of free things on my sidewalk and I got rid of it all. So it's extra things that I just didn't need. Right. And now I'm at this, I'm starting to clean out. I don't want anything else. So when Wayne asked me this year, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want an experience. I don't want stuff. I don't mm. want more jewelry. Yeah. I don't want more kitchen stuff. I don't want... I don't want stuff. Just give me an experience. I want a memory. Yeah. So that's why we went to Italy. Mm-hmm. Did I ever get a memory? <laughs> <laughs> and you have bruises. I guess I lost some show. as well. <laughs> you will have a memory there with right. stitches. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's my fear of missing out. And uh, I am really grateful uh, for this trip because it taught me so much. It taught Mm -hmm. me so much and it was a trip and it's not, it's just that, you know, 10 days. And yet it taught me so much, not only about uh, how I should have my next trip, but just my life, just to declutter. And if I don't like the word clutter, I can say, just edit, edit my life. Yeah. Start editing. Because when you can, when you can edit, you can get. Right. what the the perfect final piece right, right. just eliminate right. what's not necessary that's mm-hmm. not the michelangelo you know just get rid of anything that's excess marble so that you right. have the masterpiece mm-hmm. left one of the one of the luxuries with cleaning out is always um when we uh, did the renovation we rented one of those big garbage bins that was sitting in our backyard for a month and I would go through stuff like yeah garbage 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 and not not I mean it's just accumulate accumulate uh-huh. you know, accumulate so, but then I I saw another phase in in the senior's life so at this moment is get rid of the things that I don't use anymore and don't get any new stuff yeah and then yeah. the last one is getting rid of everything. Where and I, I remember my mother-in-law at some point said that I have something for you at my house. So I would go over and I would give her something for a birthday. And here's that same thing sitting in the original box. And she said, You bought this for me. I want you to take it back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And then there's that downsizing, which is another phase. And then, yeah, life is interesting. 
some like lessons I've yeah. learned. Things we yeah. accumulate because we have fear of missing out that we don't need. That's right. And it's not just things. It sometimes it is the experience itself, right? right? right. Downsize how many experiences yeah. you are putting yourself through. Because That's true. That's true. One good experience makes up for it, it's worth more than 10. You don't have to travel to Italy or to Ireland to get an experience either. That's right. That's right. That's you can right. go to the park and have a picnic. Yeah. Yeah. Just make the most of life. Make the most of the stay that we have. The gift of yeah. opening your eyes in the morning and yeah. living in that gift. Yeah. And start small. Start with baby yeah. steps. Start with baby steps. Tackle the, dr the junk drawer that's not your favorite junk drawer. <laughs> Start right. cleaning out that junk drawer. When I look at my bag, I have a bag of cards, decks of cards. There's probably 12 decks of cards in there. Hmm. Well, I need that. <laughs> nope. Nope. Never did need it. Yeah. So why? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's going to be the first to go. Yeah. yeah. No, it's interesting. Very interesting. Great topic today, Fran. Yes. Thank you, Marina. It is a great topic for me and anyone else who's got as many emails that they haven't opened as me <laughs> and maybe you. <laughs> and now I'm motivated. I'm going to start to clean out emails today. <laughs> maybe I should too. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much. It's great to you, be Fran. back. Great to see your beautiful face Welcome again. Welcome having you back. Yeah. And yeah. We'll talk soon. Thank okay. you everybody for watching. And we hope that we gave you some hope today in facing FOMO. Yeah. And we will be back next week. If you like what we do, please subscribe. We are on Audible. No, not Audible. We are on full, <laughs> full uh, uh, Apple. Spotify. Spotify. We are on Apple. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, there's an entire list, and YouTube. And we hope to see you next week. Take care. Talk soon. <laughs>